actually faster than a normal attack, but because you're countering earlier before their attack hits you, the en for the enemy's perspective, it looks like the attack is coming at them faster. Or I guess the point at which the counter initiates to when your weapon lands at them uh, or on them is shorter. So it's not actually a faster animation. But again, so, it yeah, them so up. it's not faster, right? It's, it's no, trippy, all but counters it's... are the same speed, obviously, unless you make it a heavy. But yeah. when the counter starts, can change because the window is not a single frame. It's you know, it's a depending on the weapon, right? It it can be quite large. So when yeah. the counter initiates in that animation, can change, making the uh, the amount of time before the counter starts and before it lands different, but not the actual swing animation itself faster. Um, early counters okay. are done because they make it, you know, make it per the enemy perceive them as faster, and so obviously it's much harder to counter back after that. So obviously they'll block, or they'll just get hit if it's fast enough, and they just won't put up their block in time. But typically they're just going to block. Yeah, and I think I, I even like do the early counters not to try and sell my opponent or get a faster animation in. Um, but usually it's because, you know, I, I predict an attack is going to come out right away, and it doesn't, and then I'm already in the counter window. Uh, sometimes I'm not even reading animation. I just go and I, I try and counter early, if that makes sense. Right, and the problem with this mentality of always going for early counters is that it leaves you susceptible to feints yeah. and yeah. feint to jab. Yeah. So let's go ahead and fight a bit, and you'll see yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Right? So if I faint... You know, to a jab, yeah. uh, or if I faint to another attack, because you're countering earlier in my animation, yeah. you're going to be more yeah. susceptible to those feints. Now, it's always remember to go back to basics. It's always remember to. It's always good to remember to go back to basics. Yeah. Um, follow me here. It's getting a little bit louder. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah let's see so that. So, always know that an attack animation has the wind up and then the release. In the wind up, an animation cannot hurt you. And so, if we wanted to play as safe as possible, we would only counter when an attack is in the release phase, because during the wind-up phase, it can be fainted, or it can be cancelled. So, for example, right, we do swing to overhead, or swing to jab, or swing to stab, right? But once it's in the wind-up phase, the part where it actually damages you, it cannot be fainted or cancelled or anything. It can only be comboed yeah. to. So, in theory, right... If you wanted to be as good as possible and as safe as possible, you would never counter in the wind-up phase because it can't hurt you, right? Clearly, the weapon is touching you right here, but it's not hurting you. So, yeah. in theory, you shouldn't be countering it at all. Um, I think that makes sense why sometimes my attack doesn't land. Like, they're behind me. It's because I'm in the animation. Like, exactly. It's not You're in the wind-up yeah. portion of the animation, not in the release portion, so it won't damage. Oh, um, okay. And that's why people will be like, bro, that went right through you. Well... It wasn't ready to actually do damage, right? If I stab like this, yeah, it's that makes touching sense, you. Yeah. It's, it's in you. This weapon is like literally yeah. in your body. But it doesn't matter because it's not in the release portion of the animation. Um, and so what happens is when you're doing those early counters, you're countering when they're in the release... Sorry, in the wind-up portion yeah. of the animation, right? And obviously, because the enemy notices this guy is countering in the wind-up portion of the animation, then they're going to faint you because they have the opportunity yeah. to faint. So that's the weakness to early counters. Obviously, they are much stronger than late counters in terms of their ability to bypass an enemy's, uh, an enemy's counter. Um... Yeah. Or just force them to block. Especially sometimes, depending on how fast your weapon is, you can probably actually hit them before latency even allows them to counter. But that's a whole other topic. Um, yeah. This means that it will leave you more susceptible to those feints and uh, faint to jabs and just cancels because of the fact that you're countering so early into their wind-up phase. So I, I guess see. if you notice that you're constantly being interrupted and you're pretty annoyed, you're going to be forced to counter later. No matter how much you accommodate for this weakness, it will not make you a stronger fighter. Countering later will not make you a stronger fighter, but what will make you better is being able to determine on the spot, this is an individual who is weak to blank. This is an individual who I should be fighting with this strategy and then winning yeah. because of that. That will make you yeah, better exactly. rather than just only ever doing early counters, you know, because the, because it's just kind of your instinct.